Hey guys, Michael here from michaelsherlock.com. It's January 6th, 2011. Today the Mac App Store launches. If you have a Mac running Snow Leopard, go ahead and go to your um, software update and you'll be able to update to 10.6.6, .6, which will then install the App Store. It'll install it as, as an application, of course, and will also automatically put it into your dock. Once you launch, you can go ahead and sign in. And this is the page. Now it's completely separate from iTunes. However, it uses the same iTunes account that you have so that purchases that you make in iTunes, purchases you make in the Mac App Store can both be credited to the same card as well as can be both, uh, or rather you can use iTunes gift cards for both accounts, which is kind of convenient. So here it is. They separate it. They work it out um, like you would expect. New and noteworthy. So apps that they are basically highlighting, as well as other apps up here. Top paid, top free, and top grossing. What's hot? Twitter, Flight Control, Evernote, Romeo and Juliet, etc. Under staff favorites, which is again another way that they can highlight it. Now you also have up here top charts. So again, it gives you more of a view than those things. Then you can also look at top charts for different categories. So for instance, if you were a graphic designer and you wanted some new apps for that, you can go ahead and look, choose something. Oh, I want Pixelator. Go ahead and go to Pixelator. And then you can go ahead and buy that right from here, which is pretty, pretty nice. Uh, categories, again, same thing if you want to break it up by category. So if you wanted to look at dev tools, you can go ahead in there. And then you can see highlighted developer tools as well as top paid, top free developer tools. So if you were looking for the $100 BB edit, you can go ahead and do that. Or if you were looking for the free text wrangler, you can go ahead and do that. Now I want to show you one thing about text wrangler. I have this installed on my computer. I got it last year with, I believe, the some bundle or something I don't, I don't remember now but I definitely have text wrangler installed and I use it for editing PHP HTML documents through my FTP editor my FTP client but it doesn't notice that it doesn't recognize that I have this application installed on my computer so it prompts me to buy it again however if we let's go back here and I'm going to show you an app that I already have let's say or iLife I have iLife installed on my computer so if I go to iLife, it tells me, oh, you already have iPhoto 11 installed on your computer. So it's installed, so it's not going to prompt you to buy it or accidentally purchase a second time if you already have it. However, iWork is different. I don't have the latest version of iWork, so it'll tell me $19.99 to buy it, whereas this is really an upgrade. But it doesn't recognize necessarily that as an upgrade. Anyway, looking at the top here again, we also have purchases. I tested out one application, Caffeine, which I was able to download, and then you'll have here all your purchases. One cool thing about purchases are the license agreement that you have when you buy us from the App Store is you can use it on any computer you have and authorized to use your iTunes account, that App Store Apple ID account. So essentially, all these applications you're getting are the you know multi-user versions of the apps and that actually is kind of interesting so let's look at some featured again uh, let's look at I want to look at aperture aperture 3 here this is to a two hundred dollar program it's very well worth it but on the App Store again this is an Apple application it's only seventy nine dollars and ninety nine cents a steal not only for an application that is worth so much but the but you know you're saving about hundred and twenty dollars over how much you'd buy it today if you walked into an Apple store went to Apple online and went ahead and purchased aperture you know the DVD which is pretty crazy such a significant discount I believe that uh, I work is also a little bit less money I believe that the that each of the applications are twenty dollars so times three that's two for sixty dollars course you know how to do the multiplication but I believe it's actually $79 or $99 depending on the one user or the multi-user agreement so you're actually paying $60 instead of $100 for pages keynote and numbers that you can use on all of your Macs so that's actually a pretty significant savings so let's let's go back to featured and look at some more applications that are available Apple says that there are about a thousand applications available at launch and more are coming soon so there's actually I would say there's two types of game of applications that you have available to you. You have iOS apps such as Flight Control, World of Goo, I believe. Oh, actually, no, we're not World of Goo. I meant Angry Birds. So Flight Control, Angry Birds, those are iOS apps that have been ported essentially to the Mac. And then you also have full-fledged applications. So for $4.99, you can buy Flight Control or Angry Birds iOS games. 
But then you'll also see apps that are much more expensive on here. Again, I showed you, what was it, BB Edit or something from a few minutes ago. Uh, that was, you know, $100. Pixelmator is $30. Apple Remote, Apple Remote Desktop is also, I believe, I believe it's actually, I want to say it's $500 on the, when you buy it. And for the multi-user agreement, the unlimited client. And this is only $80, which is pretty impressive. And again, as long as that each account, each computer is authorized to use your Apple ID, then you'll be able to use it on all computers, which is pretty exciting. So let me just show you how easy it is to install an application. We'll go to Twitter. This is formerly Tweety. Twitter bought it, and now it's Twitter for Mac. So I actually have Tweety installed on here, the old version. So let's install Twitter. Click on it. It's free, of course. And it'll, it wants my password. So I'll go ahead and type that in. And I'll sign in just to confirm that this is me. And now it just flew, as you saw. It's installing, and now it says installed. So it'll install into your applications folder, of course, but it also puts it onto your desk, onto your dock. So then you can go ahead and open it up, ask for a login, and it's really that simple. And then anytime there's an update, you'll be able to go to your updates tab and be able to update right from here. So it's a one-click install process, and it all works through the app, the app store as opposed to having separate installers which is pretty nice considering sometimes those installers are very tedious to use and are very difficult and annoying and time consuming to do us and updating is also very strenuous as well sometimes so to have it all through the app store is pretty cool I can see I can definitely see this taking off the one problem is Apple is still gonna be kinda strict on what applications they let in but unlike iOS they're not gonna be able to restrict you to only download apps from the app store so this is a nice way to save some discounts on some of your software that you currently have and currently enjoy but don't feel like it's the one-stop shop because you'll still be able to download apps from wherever you are and of course apps that Apple doesn't necessarily think are the best for their environment you'll still be able to download from the respective developers websites so I'm Michael Sherlock from michaelsherlock.com. Do you think the App Store is really going to take off, or do you think this is something that's just going to melt away into the dust? I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your January 6th, and have a nice day.